How is this even possible? NASA just revealed Dream Chaser's 1.5G landing absolutely destroys Dragon's brutal 3 to 4G ocean crash. But wait, it gets worse for SpaceX. Dream Chaser carries 33 cubic meters of pressurized cargo, while Dragon manages only 9.3. NASA's been hiding this winged space plane that lands on runways like a normal aircraft. Why would they keep this secret? Let's dive right in. Here's what SpaceX doesn't want you to know about those successful Dragon landings. Every single time Dragon hits the ocean, it's experiencing forces that would crush a human body. We're talking about three to four Gs of pure punishment. Imagine being pressed into your seat by an invisible giant while your million-dollar space experiments get hammered into oblivion. But here's the kicker. NASA has been watching this destruction happen for over a decade, mission after mission. Those delicate protein crystals that pharmaceutical companies spent months growing in zero gravity turned into expensive ocean debris. The biological samples that could lead to breakthrough cancer treatments destroyed by salt water and brutal impact forces. Yet they kept using Dragon because they thought they had no choice. But what if I told you NASA was secretly developing something that makes Dragon look like a relic from the Stone Age? While everyone was obsessing over SpaceX's rockets, NASA quietly developed Dream Chaser, a winged rebel that's about to flip the entire space industry upside down. This isn't just another spacecraft. It's a complete revolution in how we think about returning from space. The numbers are absolutely staggering, and they reveal why NASA kept this secret for so long. Dragon's pressurized cargo bay, a cramped 9.3 cubic meters, basically a walk-in closet. Dream Chaser, a spacious 33 cubic meters of perfectly climate-controlled space. That's like comparing a phone booth to a luxury apartment. But volume isn't even the real game-changer here. It's what happens when these spacecraft return to Earth that will blow your mind. Let's talk about what those G-forces actually do to your body and precious cargo. When Dragon crashes into the ocean at 3 to 4 Gs, it's like being in a car accident. But in reverse, your internal organs shift, your vision blurs, and any delicate equipment gets absolutely hammered. Those space-grown protein crystals that companies like Merck are developing for new medicines they shatter like glass on impact. The biological samples that could revolutionize drug development, they're contaminated by salt water before scientists can even study them. Dream Chaser's 1.5G landing, it's gentler than most commercial airline landings. Those same protein crystals that Dragon destroys, they survive perfectly intact. The delicate biological samples, they're pristine when they touch down on the runway. But here's what's really mind-blowing. And this is where SpaceX's entire ocean recovery system falls apart. Dream Chaser doesn't just land gently, it lands at airports. Real airports. Any runway longer than 2.4 kilometers becomes a potential landing site. That means scientists can get their hands on space experiments within hours, not days. Compare that to Dragon's recovery process. You need a specific ocean zone, a multi-million dollar recovery ship, and teams of divers. Then you have to hope the salt water didn't destroy your experiments while you waited for the ship to arrive. This is where NASA's secret becomes explosive. They've been watching SpaceX struggle with ocean recoveries while sitting on technology that could solve everything. But why keep it hidden for so long? Here's where Dream Chaser gets really interesting. It comes with a secret weapon called the Shooting Star Module. And this is where SpaceX's Dragon gets completely outclassed. Shooting Star isn't just extra cargo space. It's a game changer for mission flexibility. The module provides additional power, thermal control, and can carry unpressurized cargo that Dragon's trunk simply can't handle as effectively. But here's the brilliant part that shows NASA's long-term thinking. After delivering supplies to the International Space Station, Shooting Star detaches and burns up in the atmosphere, taking all the space station's trash with it. Meanwhile, the valuable Dream Chaser space plane returns safely to Earth ready to fly again. Dragon, it needs extensive decontamination after every ocean splashdown. The salt water corrodes everything electronic, and the recovery process is expensive, time-consuming, and potentially damaging to sensitive cargo. Dream Chaser's design traces back to NASA's HL-20 lifting body concept, 
But Sierra Space revolutionized it with technology that makes Dragon look like a Model T Ford. The heat protection system uses advanced silica tiles and something called TUFROC, a material so tough it can survive multiple re-entries without degradation. Those wings aren't just for show, they're precisely engineered to provide lift during re-entry, allowing the spacecraft to glide through the atmosphere with pinpoint accuracy. But here's what really sets Dream Chaser apart. It uses non-toxic propellants. While Dragon requires hazardous material teams after every landing, Dream Chaser can be serviced like a regular aircraft. Faster turnaround times, fewer safety restrictions, and dramatically lower operational costs. This is where Dream Chaser's gentle landing becomes truly revolutionary, and it's why NASA finally revealed their secret. Companies are already planning to use space-grown crystals for new drug development. These crystals, grown in zero gravity, are larger and more perfect than anything we can create on Earth. But here's the problem SpaceX created. Dragon's violent ocean landing destroys many of these crystals before they can be studied. We're talking about potential breakthroughs in cancer treatment, better vaccines, and revolutionary drug delivery systems, all destroyed by brutal splashdowns. Dream Chaser's runway landing preserves them perfectly. This isn't just about cargo delivery anymore. It's about accelerating medical breakthroughs that could save millions of lives. Let's break down the real comparison that SpaceX doesn't want you to see. Dream Chaser carries 5,500 kilograms to the space station compared to Dragon's 6,000 kilograms. That's only a 500 kilogram difference, practically identical. But here's where it gets interesting. Dream Chaser's return capacity is 1,750 kilograms while Dragon manages 2,500 kilograms. SpaceX will tell you that's an advantage. But what good is higher return capacity if your cargo is destroyed during landing? The real killer stat? Dream Chaser's 33 cubic meters of pressurized space absolutely crushes Dragon's 9.3 cubic meters. It's like comparing a shipping container to a delivery van. Dream Chaser can land on thousands of airports worldwide. Kennedy Space Center, Edwards Air Force Base, even international airports could potentially serve as landing sites. This flexibility is something Dragon simply cannot match. Think about the implications. Emergency medical evacuations from space could land at the nearest major airport. Precious research samples could be delivered directly to laboratories. Time-sensitive experiments could reach scientists within hours instead of days. Dragon's ocean recovery system suddenly looks primitive by comparison. You're locked into specific recovery zones, dependent on weather conditions, and always at risk of losing your cargo to the ocean. But Dream Chaser's journey hasn't been smooth, and this is where the story gets really interesting. Originally scheduled to fly in 2024, technical issues with ULA's BE-4 engines pushed the launch to late 2025. These same engines power the Vulcan rocket that carries Dream Chaser to space. The delay gave SpaceX more time to cement their dominance, but it also allowed Sierra Space to perfect their revolutionary design. Here's what's fascinating. While SpaceX was celebrating their ocean splashdowns, NASA was quietly solving the fundamental problems those splashdowns created. Sometimes the best revenge is living well, and Dream Chaser is about to prove that patience pays off. The first Dream Chaser mission, called Demo-1, is scheduled for late 2025. This isn't just another cargo run. It's the moment everything changes in space logistics. If successful, Demo-1 will demonstrate that runway landings aren't just possible, they're superior. NASA will finally have a real alternative to Dragon's destructive ocean landings. The pharmaceutical industry will have a way to safely return their precious space-grown crystals. But here's the real question that's been haunting the space industry. Why did NASA wait so long to reveal this technology? Some industry insiders suggest NASA was protecting SpaceX's market position. Others believe they were waiting for the perfect moment to unveil their ace in the hole. The truth is probably somewhere in between. NASA needed Dragon to work while they perfected Dream Chaser. They couldn't risk putting all their eggs in one basket. But now that Dream Chaser is ready, the gloves are coming off. Sierra Space isn't stopping with cargo missions. They're already developing the DC-200, a crewed version that could carry up to seven astronauts. Picture this. Instead of astronauts splashing down in the ocean after months in space, 
They could land at an airport and walk off the spacecraft like they're getting off a commercial flight. The implications are staggering. Emergency medical evacuation from space becomes routine. Crew rotations lose the trauma of ocean landings. Space tourism becomes as safe as commercial aviation. Dream Chaser's gentle landing opens up entirely new possibilities for space-based research. Biological experiments that were previously impossible due to Dragon's harsh re-entry become routine. Material science research that requires pristine sample return becomes feasible. The pharmaceutical industry is already taking notice. Space-grown protein crystals could lead to new cancer treatments, better vaccines, and revolutionary drug delivery systems. But only if they survive the journey back to Earth intact. The question isn't whether Dream Chaser can compete with Dragon anymore. The question is whether Dragon can adapt to compete with Dream Chaser's revolutionary approach to space cargo return. While SpaceX has been dominating headlines with bigger and more powerful rockets, Dream Chaser has been quietly solving the problems that SpaceX's ocean landings created. It's not about being bigger or more powerful. It's about being smarter and more precise. The first Dream Chaser mission will mark the beginning of a new era in space logistics, one where science comes first, where precious cargo survives the journey home, and where the future of space-based research is no longer limited by the destructive forces of ocean landings. SpaceX revolutionized getting to space. Dream Chaser is about to revolutionize coming back. So here's the reality check. Dream Chaser's 1.5G landing isn't just destroying Dragon's 3 to 4G brutality. It's rewriting the entire playbook for space logistics. While SpaceX perfected the art of getting to space, NASA quietly cracked the code for coming back intact. The Demo-1 mission in late 2025 won't just be another cargo run. It'll be the moment the space industry realizes that gentle runway landings aren't just possible, they're inevitable. Those pharmaceutical breakthroughs we talked about, they're all waiting for that smooth touchdown. But here's what really gets me thinking. If NASA had this technology ready years ago, what other game-changing innovations are they sitting on right now? The James Webb Telescope revolutionized how we see the universe. Could Dream Chaser revolutionize how we use it? I'm curious, do you think SpaceX will adapt their ocean recovery system or double down on building something completely new? Drop your thoughts below, and if you're as fascinated by space logistics as I am, there's way more coming on this channel. The future of space isn't just about getting there, it's about coming home safely. What breakthrough do you think we'll see next? Six V3 nose cones just appeared at Starbase overnight. The same industry experts who called Musk's production timeline impossible are now scrambling to explain how SpaceX did it. Here's what nobody expected. While Boeing takes years to build one rocket, SpaceX manufactured six advanced nose cones simultaneously. S39 through S44 each represent breakthrough technology that solves every major V1 and V2 failure. But here's the kicker. These aren't just prototypes. They're production models with revolutionary heat shields and reinforced structures ready for actual missions. The manufacturing rate everyone said was fantasy? It's happening right now. What does this mean for the future of space? One starship per day by 2026. While competitors struggle with single builds, SpaceX is about to flood the market. Will traditional aerospace survive this disruption? Let's dive right in. So what exactly happened at Starbase that night? Picture this scenario. Aerospace analysts wake up to photos showing six identical nose cones lined up in perfect formation. Not prototypes, not test models. Production-ready V3 components numbered S39 through S44. But here's where it gets strange. These nose cones appeared faster than anyone thought possible. Remember, Boeing takes 18 months to build a single rocket. Lockheed Martin needs years for one satellite. Yet somehow, SpaceX manufactured six advanced spacecraft components simultaneously. The engineering community went silent. How do you explain production rates that shouldn't exist? The answer lies in something SpaceX calls the Star Factory. While competitors still hand-build rockets like medieval craftsmen, Musk created the world's first true mass production space facility.
Think of it like this. Traditional aerospace works like a custom car shop. One engineer, one rocket, months of individual assembly. The Star Factory, it's Tesla's Gigafactory model applied to spacecraft. Multiple stations, each building specific components, all running simultaneously. But that's just the beginning. The real breakthrough comes from vertical integration. Instead of waiting months for suppliers, SpaceX builds everything in-house, engines, fuel tanks, electronics, even the specialized steel alloys. When you control every component, you control the timeline. Yet something doesn't add up. Even with perfect manufacturing, six nose cones in weeks? The math seemed impossible until we discovered the hidden factor. Here's what nobody saw coming.